Whether or not you crush your biochar really depends on a number of different factors because biochar can be used for more things than just as a soil amendment. It also depends on the size of the material that you've started with. Things like rice hulls or wood pellets or other forms of carbon that are already small in size may not need any further reduction. A lot of wood-based carbonaceous material will hold its shape. So whatever you started with, it's going to basically hold that same shape. Um, it'll just be smaller in size because all of the water and all of the volatiles have been taken out. But this will need to be crushed. And I'll show you how it is that I do that. I do it in a very passive way. I use biochar as a soil amendment and I'm looking for it to improve the soil in a number of different ways. First is to provide a home for the microbiology, basically providing habitat for all of those microbes to come and live within the char. Second thing I'm looking for it to do is to draw in all of that moisture. Biochar is incredibly absorbent and so all of the moisture that is in the soil, it's going to be retained. So water retention is a very important aspect of what I'm looking for it to do. And then third, it's to improve the tilth of the soil. So to answer the question on how it's able to draw in moisture and provide habitat lies in its porosity. What determines porosity is also based on a number of different factors, beginning with what type of material you're starting with, because each individual different type of material is going to have a different cellular structure. What also is a large determining factor, the temperature, the intensity at which it's processed, and the duration. Ranging from cracks and fissures, which you can see with the naked eye, to that which you can't see and is measured in nanometers, you would actually need an electron microscope to see. Whether or not I crush this piece of char doesn't change the porosity. What that does is it allows me to distribute it in a more uniform fashion. Here's an example of some biochar that was made in a trench. And it's pretty evident that there's material in here of all different sizes. And this has not been crushed, nor do I intend on crushing it. What I reserve this for is putting it into the bedding areas in the chicken coops, which helps to reduce the amount of odor and then it also begins the inoculation process. So the obvious question would be, what size should you crush your char to? Well, again, it depends on the context for which you are going to be using it. But for myself, using it as a soil amendment, I like to see it somewhere around 3 eighths of an inch or less. If I have bigger chunks in there, I don't get too concerned about it. I also have the view and the opinion that diversity is great. Yes, I have some larger chunks, in my compost and in my soil, but I also have stuff all the way down to dust. Or you can get as creative or spend as much time on developing some kind of a system that works best for you. There's no rules to any of this. There's a lot of different ways that you can go about mechanically crushing your char, either by creating something fairly elaborate or doing something as I've done is experimenting with a lot of low-tech options, like putting your char in a sack or a bag, walking or driving over it, or using some other form of crushing device like a tamper. What I found that works best is putting it in the areas where my livestock are going to just naturally be traveling. In their travel corridors, in their bedding areas, in the places where I'm feeding them, put the char there and then allow them just to walk over the top of it and I can completely remove the step of me actually having to crush it. I've experimented with sheep, cows, and pigs. And sheep typically, in my opinion, are a little too light to actually get a good crush. Cows are gonna be the optimum, they weigh the most, and, and pigs are, they do a fine job as well, provided that you have them on some kind of a, like a harder surface. What I do is I just take stock like this, put it in areas where they're gonna walk, and this will all get incorporated into this wood chip, which will eventually wind up in the chicken yard and be made into compost. Thanks for your help, man. When you're working with dry char, there's going to be a lot of airborne particulates and you're going to want to provide yourself some form of respiratory protection. Another thing that you can do that helps to minimize the amount of dust and airborne particulates is the use of water. 
what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll wet this area down. And that just kind of helps to settle everything down and really hold in all those particulates so that they don't become airborne when you're transporting this. Here's a closer up view of some of that material that Steer's been walking on. He's done a pretty fine job of crushing all this stuff down. Yeah, we're gonna mix this in here and let the chickens get after it. Whether or not you crush your char or not really depends on how you're going to be using it and how you do it is entirely up to you. If you have any further questions on biochar, take a look at some of the other videos in our biochar playlist. And thanks for watching.